Right now, we have the candidates for Cambridge in studio with us, and in no particular order, it's just the way they randomly sat down. We have David Haskell of the People's Party of Canada, Sonny Atwal with the Conservative Party, Scott Hamilton with the NDP, Brian May with the Liberals, and Michelle Braniff with the Greens. Thanks to each of you for making the time for us this morning. You're welcome. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Good, morning. Good morning. All right. We've got five candidates, four microphones, so I'll have the microphone from Scott slid over to Sonny Atwal with the Conservatives. See, we can share all different parties and get along. In this studio this morning, along. can't we just get along? It's one <laughs> Sunny with the Conservative Party. What motivates you to run? Well, first off, thanks, Mike, for having me on on today, and everyone for listening. Um, the first thing that motivates me is, is people and the community. Um, one of the main reasons why I'm running is that, just like most people, I mean, we've been knocking on thousands of doors out there, and everyone's just tired of politics, politicians, and politics. And that word basically is turned into a dirty word when you mention politics or politician. And I truly believe we need to take it back to basics. Uh, we need a community leader. Uh, we need to put the community first. And people always say to me, well, Sonny, you're, you're part of a party and, and you have to tote party lines. Well, Mike, I mean, the last six and a half years I've been part of a franchise, um, right? And you look at the, each, each, each political party, it's, it's similar to a franchise. And an example, whenever we have something come from our franchise, as an owner-operator, if we don't agree with it, chances are the other franchisees don't agree with it as well. So you talk to the other franchisees, we get together, instead of being one voice, we're five, six, representing 20 stores type thing, right? And that's the same thing with, uh, with being a member of parliament. Community first. So if there's something coming down from, from our party or, or the prime minister, whatever, whatever the scenario may be, well, if it doesn't fit with our community, chances are and our MPs next door, they feel the same way. Well, if we get together and then we table it to our leader, they're, they're going to listen, Right. All right, and over to David Haskell with the People's Party. Why are you running? Uh, thanks, Mike. I, I just have to pick up on something Sonny said. He said that he's pleased. He, he can disagree with his leader and that some of the policies, uh, he, if he doesn't agree, other MPs who are conservatives can get together and then put those policies up the change and their leader will listen. Well, that hasn't been the case at all. And the reason I mention that is the reason I'm running for the People's Party is the conservatives came and they recruited me. Uh, early on, and they said, will you run for us? I went so far as to fill out my nomination. But then when I asked them, can I talk about this and this? I said, can I talk about what's happening in identity politics? I said that right now we are actually seeing people discriminated against. Uh, if you are a straight white male, you're discriminated against mm -hmm. because, of, because of the liberal government. Um, and so I said, I want to talk about that. The, the conservatives said, no, you can't. I said, I'm concerned about the immigration in our country, the rates are too high. I've seen the research. I've quoted the research. And they said, no, you can't talk about that. That'll cost us votes. So the reason that I joined the People's Party was I'm tired of the political correctness that's stopping us from telling the truth. And so when, when people say, how did it all start? I, I was at Wilfrid Laurier. I'm a professor there. And I saw how censorship has stopped diversity of opinion on campus. Uh, if people are familiar with the Lindsay Shepard case. Lindsay Shepard was forbidden from showing a, a TV clip from public TV. Uh, I stood with her. I was one of the only professors who did. And it was then that I realized how far the pendulum has swung in terms of the ability to say what's true. You can't anymore because so of political So do you agree with everything Maxime Bernier says? Uh, I think that all the policies, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm supportive of, of those. But the thing about that is outside of the policies, we're the only party that says... You can vote your conscience. That's not true. You can bring forward. You can bring forward yeah. other ideas. Michelle, you said that's not I think, true. I think the the Green, Green Party. the Green Party can as well. Sorry, Michelle, you're right. I'm curious as to the issue, the one issue that resonates most loudly with you in this campaign. What do you think matters most to people in Cambridge? David Haskell, People's Party. Uh, I think the thing that I hear most vocally, you know, where people are really passionate. I, I agree with Scott that the opioid crisis is something that people are concerned about, uh, especially the effect that it's having on the safety of their kids. Um, they, they see needles along the sidewalk and, you know, their kids are walking to school and, and these things are really a problem. Now, how we're different, uh, my, my party, the People's Party, is different because we're not convinced that harm, harm reduction strategies are the way to go. Uh, for example, I am against a safe injection site. We're different from the other parties on that because research proves that the safe injection sites actually encourage riskier opioid use and they increase deaths they don't decrease them it also does nothing to get people clean 
So that's a major issue I'm hearing. But like Sunny, people are concerned about the cost of living. So what we're offering is we're going to give a tax break. But unlike the Conservatives, the 1%, we actually are going to allow people who make between 15 and 100000 they're only going to pay a flat 15%. And then the last thing that, again, I hear, and this really relates to what's happening at a federal level, and people are aware of it, it's corruption. They look at what's going on at, at the federal level, and they say there's a lot of corruption. I mean, we've got a sitting prime minister who has been charged with breach of ethics, not just once, but twice. The first time he took a $200,000 gift from a buddy and went on a vacation to an island. And the second time he tried to corrupt the justice system. People see that, but they don't see an alternative with Andrew Scheer. Here's a guy who has criticized my party for wanting to reduce immigration, but has done a side deal with Quebec saying, we'll allow you to reduce immigration because he knows he wants to get votes there. Uh, Also, conservatives typically would want to make life more affordable for people. We're doing that by getting rid of supply management. Right now, the poorest Canadians pay $600 a year extra because of costs on poultry and eggs and milk because those prices are set by a cartel. We want to get rid of supply management. But in order to get votes, Sonny's leader, Andrew Scheer, has said, no, we're keeping supply management in place. Okay, so it's opioids, it's affordability, and it's corruption Corruption, in the federal government. All right. Uh, When we have discussions like this and around issues, it generally, it tends to go to uh, talking points from party platforms. And that's fine because we want to know what the parties stand for because we may be electing you and and by virtue of that, a leader as well. But one of the things we hear most about when we do forums like this is, what are they doing for my community? We're talking about the riding of Cambridge right now. So David Haskell with the People's Party of Canada. So what I can do for Cambridge citizens, it, it divides into a micro level and a macro level. And I've really come to appreciate the, the different needs of our community. The more we listen, the more we'll get the better ideas and we'll reach out to the people who are the experts in the community. I'll give you some examples. I've been talking to the veterans locally, and I say, well, what do you think is, is what we need? And they have great ideas. And actually, we've been able to incorporate some of their ideas. We just put out a veterans policy for the People's Party, and it was crafted by veterans. It's going to increase their, their pensions to the levels that were cut after 2006. I've been talking with seniors, and they're concerned about their pensions. And I say, well, what do you need? And based on those conversations, we can move forward. I've been talking to people who've been si- significantly affected by the opioid crisis. And I say, well, what do you think we need? And they say, we need people to get off drugs, not to be sustained in, in, a, in a situation where they're not getting clean. <clears throat> So that's the micro level. At the macro level... But how do you help them get off the drugs then? Like on the ground, and for those people that yep. you've spoken to, how do you help them get off drugs? So the issue is a provincial issue. And this is what I worry about, that a lot of people make promises that because health care is a provincial okay. issue. If it's a, if it's a provincial issue, why are you talking about it? Because at the, at the federal level, we can create the, the criteria to allow for changes at the provincial level. And that's what we want to do in the People's Party. We're going to say we're removing those parts of the Canada Health Act that have restrictions on funding. What we're going to do in the People's Party, we're going to take the transfer payments that are inconsistent and we're going to say we're always going to give you the GST. We're going to give provinces the GST. You will have firm funding. It's about the equivalent of what the transfer payments are. It's around $40 billion. We're going to give it to you, but without conditions. So provinces, if you want to make changes to your addictions policies, you want to do something new, We're going to allow that. And as the federal government, we're going to advise on that. Scott mentioned the Portuguese model. It is a good model. It's one of the best. So at a federal level, we can suggest maybe you'll follow this. It's very different with the People's Party. We're actually willing to take away the restrictions so that we can allow for innovation. All right. Brian May. Oh, our whole show has been about Cambridge today. It absolutely (laughs) is. Brian May, over to you with the Liberals. Thanks. I... Honestly, want to continue to build upon the work uh, that we have been doing for the last four years. I have fought uh, for support for Cambridge um, in, in in many different ways. Uh, obviously, bringing dollars uh, to the riding for infrastructure is is, is a key part of our, our job. Um, One point six million, for example, for the digital library, the old post office uh, in downtown Galt. Fifty thousand dollars for for North Dumfries preventative flooding infrastructure. Uh, we brought ninety six million. To, uh, for the Highway 401 expansion, which is almost uh, almost finished. 
Um, the list continues. Uh, we, you know, 23 million for Grand River uh, Transit. We, we need to keep building on this. We need somebody who will continue to fight for Cambridge and, and, and get its fair share. You talk they about Grand River Transit and 401 expansion mm-hmm. in the same breath almost there, Brian. Which yep. is more important? I think they're they're one and the same. We have to recognize that that public transit is is a key infrastructure plank uh, from our platform. Uh, by the way, uh, it's been independently shown that our platform from 2015, we we we've finished ninety two percent. We've done ninety two percent of what, what we committed to. We talk about trust, and a few folks here today have talked about trust. Um, the people of Canada can trust, the people of Cambridge can trust that that we are going to do what we say we're going to do. Thank you. I want to move on. And, and Brian touched on trust. I, I've admitted that I stole this question, so I'm being honest about it, from my colleague Brian Burke, host of Kitchener Today. And it's a simple question. Why should we believe you? David Haskell, People's Party of Canada, why should we believe you? Before I move into that, I, I just have to raise some questions for Brian. I mean, Brian was saying that he's for Cambridge citizens, but he denied citizens here who would have had disabilities the chance to get further ahead and have their lives improved when he voted against Bill C-395. It was a bill that would stop uh, disabled people from having their funds clawed back when they work. So as it is now, when someone works uh, and they're disabled, they actually will lose part of their their salary. Brian, you want to respond to that? But he it's, voted it's against that. Wildly simplistic, and and I think we're talking it's about not a pri- it is for the massively people who simplistic. lost that you money. Read, you should read the bill. Okay, David, do you okay, want to tell sure. us why we should believe you as an MP? Yeah. So or, why? Because I'm willing to say the things that other people aren't. I I'm willing to say things that people will say. Wow, that that's uncomfortable. And I think that when you have a politician who's willing to say things that they know might cause people not to vote for them, but they do it because it's the truth. That's a really good sign.